The title of this problem is uh, motion under a drag force. Now the problem is stated as follows. An object moves under a force F, which is a resistive force, uh, and it's given as minus uh, km v squared, where v is the speed of the object. Now the minus sign indicates it faces the other way to slow the object down. Now. Uh, it may look like you may not have a force like this, but in fact you do. This normally happens uh, when you have an object which moves under uh, the drag force of air, for instance, for certain speeds. In fact, the uh, air drag will, ch uh, will actually be proportional to V squared for some speeds. For higher speeds, it's V cube, even V to the power 4. It's, well, this is suitable for... Uh, ranges of, say, a car's speed when it's about around 100 kilometers per hour, if I re recall correctly. If not, I may be mistaken. But th this is such a model. Now, uh, the formula may look a little strange uh, because it involves the mass. M is there essentially to make the notation simpler. Uh, you will see how it helps in the notation. Normally, I could have stated this as minus an, another constant times v squared, it would have been, uh, the solution would not have changed by much. Uh, the m is there so that the solution will look nicer, you will see how. Now, uh, so you're given the force, of course, uh, if it's a resistive force, the object must be moving to start with, otherwise there will be no motion. So the initial conditions are given as at time t equals zero, uh, the position of the object is given as zero, and the velocity of the object is given as v zero. And we're supposed to find the subsequent motion, so we have four things to find. One is the speed as a function of time. Uh, the second is the position of the object as a function of time. Part C asks for uh, the speed of the object as a function of position. And the last part asks for the acceleration of the object as a function of position again. Now, uh, in fact, th this is sort of a guided problem, you will see that well, if you find these in this order, it's actually easier. So how do we go about this? What you need to write is just Newton's second law for the object. So simply put, the, the force will be the mass times the acceleration. So the first part asks for V of t. So essentially we know that A is just dV dt. So this is going to be, uh, so we have from this equation, if I plug it in, the force in this problem is given as minus kmv squared. So I have uh, m times dv dt equals minus kmv squared. Now you see exactly why having the m in there helps in the, uh, in the form of the solution. Here it just cancels. So now we need to solve uh, this differential equation. Now, turns out it's not that difficult. So I have, essentially I can move the v squared over here. It's just separable. So you have equals minus k dt. Now, if I integrate both sides, uh, and the nice part is that I can do definite integration, which I can do both sides from t equals 0 to t, t equals 0 to t, in which case I will not have a constant to worry about if I plug in the correct values. So uh, dv over v squared 
the integral of that is just 1 over v. So I have uh, 1 over v of t evaluated from t equals 0 to t. And over here, ah, wait, I missed a minus sign. So the integral of 1 over v squared is just minus 1 over v. On the right hand side, I have k dt, which will be just kt evaluated from t equals 0 to t. Now, uh, again, the minus sign carried. So the minus signs go away. If I evaluate both sides, I get 1 over v of t at time t. And I must subtract the value at t equals 0, which is given by the initial condition here. So v at time 0, that is. So I have minus 1 over v0 equals kt, because at t equals 0, it's just 0. Uh, if I try to get v of t out of there, so 1 over v of t equals uh, 1 over v0 plus kt. So if I invert both sides, I get v of t equals uh, 1 over 1 over v0 plus kt. Now, this is in fact the correct answer, but uh, I can write it in a form which feels better, more comfortable, which I like better because, well, here the units are sort of mixed up. I can't see that it's, it's a velocity. So I can multiply the numerator and num denominator by v0, which gives me something better to look at, becomes v0 over 1 plus k uh, v0t. Now, uh, on top I have a velocity. Now here, the denominator must be unitless overall, so this part must also be unitless. Is that true? The thing is, well, uh, speed, time, uh, I don't know k, the units of k. The units of k I can find from here. So the overall thing, so the force is just mass times acceleration. So uh, let me see, so kmv squared, must be a force. So that means if I forget the m, k times v squared must be an acceleration. So the units of k times uh, speed squared is just length squared over time squared must turn out to be an acceleration unit, which is uh, length over time squared. So the units of k must turn out to be uh, 1 over length. So v times t is obviously a distance. Then 1 over l, it is unitless. So it works out. So this is the answer. To your part A. Now part B is asking for the position as a function of time. What I'm going to have to do is integrate this with respect to time. So I'm going to just say x as a function of time equals from 0 to t uh, of v0 over 1 plus kv0t dt. Now, uh, I need a simple change of variables to make this work. Uh, the best change of variables I can think of is using u to be 1 plus k v 0 t, in which case uh, du is equal to k v 0 dt. Now, with a total change of variables, I can even change the integration limits. Uh, at t equals 0, u is going to be 1. So from u equals 1 to uh, 
u uh, to 1 plus k v0 t, the integrand is going to be what? Instead of v0 dt, I can put uh, 1 over k uh, du over u. Now, 1 over k is a constant, so I get 1 over k. The integral of du over u is ln u. So this is going to be integrated, uh, evaluated from u equals 1 to 1 plus k v0 t. Well, ln 1 is just 0, so this evaluates to be 1 over k times ln of 1 plus k v0 t. This is position as a function of time. Now, uh, this is the answer to your part B. Now, at this point, we can just look at the, we have found the speed as a function of time and the position as a function of time. Uh, what has happened here, uh, the object never stops. With a drag force such as this, which is proportional to your speed, the object will, in fact, never stop. Uh, so the, the position diverges, but only logarithmically, very slowly. So the farther it goes, the slower it is. And uh, the speed essentially drops as like 1 over t with time. Now, part c uh, asks us to find the position as a function, uh, the, the, the speed as a function of position. So I need to eliminate time between these two equations. Uh, now, the, the reoccurring expression is 1 plus kv0t. So if I just take that from one equation and plug it into the other one, then I'll be happy. So I can just move this around and find 1 plus kv0t instead uh, in terms of position. I can just plug that in back there and it will work. You can try pulling out t exactly and it will still work, but you will do the additional work of just moving things around. Not very useful. So uh, essentially I have, if I move things in that equation around, I have kx equals ln 1 plus kv0t, which just drops 1 plus kv0t equals e to the power kx. Plugging it, plug it uh, by plugging it over in over here, I just find v now as a function of x because I have eliminated time from the equation. Now I have e equals to v zero over uh, one plus k v zero t is just e to the power k x, or well, I can write that without any fractions e to the power minus kx. So you end up, if you look in terms of position, if you look at a distance x, you will find that the speed will decay exponentially uh, like that. Well, it drops much faster than that, in fact. So v is a function of x. This is what happens. Uh, the last part is asking for the acceleration as a function of x. I'll need some space. Clean up. Well, I just erased an equation I needed. Anyway, uh, the, the original thing was the, that the acceleration as a function of, uh, I, I knew the acceleration to start with, it, it was just this force over the mass. So this is minus k v squared. Now, since I know the this, this speed uh, as a function of position, it's very easy to plug it in and find acceleration as a function of position is just minus k v squared. It's then v0 squared e to the minus kx squared, which is just e to the power minus 2 kx. 
So the acceleration of the object with respect to distance, it also decays exponentially, just twice as fast as uh, the speed of the object. So this is the answer to part D. Hmm? And if you graph that, well, uh, it also starts at, at t equals 0, obviously, yes. So you'll have to draw it down here. It starts at minus k v0 squared, and then it will decay to 0. And this axis is a as a function of x. This is what happens. 